Hey guys, and welcome back to Pixel Cherry Ninja's channel. You're here because you want to do some retro gaming on your brand new Asus ROG Ally. Well, let's have a look. Let's install RetroArch and run it like a boss. So we haven't got Emu Deck for it out at the moment. It is available for Patreon subscribers of Emu Deck, but not for the general public. I'm okay with front ends, but I'm quite happy just running RetroArch as well. So first of all, go to the link in the description, www.retroarch.com. Once we're there, head over to the download section and uh yeah once we're here let's just scroll down a little bit so because the asus rog Ally is a windows device we are going to go over to the windows section now there's different ways of installing it i'm going to show you the way i install it and there's reason there's reasons i install it a certain way and that's because when i update it it makes it easier we'll, we'll do an update in another video let me know if you guys want to see that but let's initially get retro arch up and running so i'm going to download the 64-bit one i'm not going to download the installer i don't want a dot exe i want like a zipped folder uh, that i'm going to unzip and i'm going to choose exactly where it goes so let's go download 64 bit okay so once that has downloaded let's uh, let's he let's head over to it okay so what we're going to do let's have a look at our download always do your due diligence and i'm just going to scan it first just to make sure it's okay and it's clean and you know we're not downloading anything malicious scan complete we are good as this is a 7-zip file, Windows can't extract that natively, so we're going to have to download 7-zip. So I'll leave a link to this in the description as well. I usually have it installed on my main PCs, but I'm new to the ROG Ally as well, just like yourselves. And oh, by the way, guys, I'm actually using a dock that I bought from my Steam Deck. It works flawlessly. I've put it in, I've attached the charger to it, and it's working absolutely fine. So let's go ahead and download the 64-bit version of 7-zip and we'll do the same thing again i want to show you guys here but make sure you scan anything you download from the internet so just run that through your virus checker through windows defender make sure it is clean okay so once you've uh, scanned that let's go ahead run that and let's just install that this will come in handy later when you're trying to uh, extract other 7-zip files so it's a program that i recommend having on your pc now i've actually partition my drives into a C and a D. I like keeping my Windows drive separate, but when you run your ROG Ally, all you're going to have is a C drive. Okay, so let's find. So what I've done is I've made C for Windows, which is like uh, 104 gig, and my D drive is 371 gig, which I'm keeping for gaming and, and programs, etc. So install it wherever you want to install it i i just like keeping my windows uh my windows installation separate my game separate but you don't have to do that so where i'm referring to a d drive you may not have a d drive you just run everything off c drive okay so now that we've installed 7-zip uh, obviously if you've had it if you've already got 7-zip you know what you're doing you can kind of skip this part here let's delete the executable because we're not going to need that anymore and hopefully when we uh shift and right click because on windows you get less options when you right click here we go we've got 7-zip there so let's just go extract files okay so here we go so now we can get rid of this uh over here just for good and clean housekeeping let's go ahead and close our web browser and uh, here we go and okay so over here we've got the retroarch that we've just downloaded let's go ahead and open file browser browser and uh, look at our drives so uh, initially you're only gonna have a c drive and you so the d drive is what i created the partition like i said i like to keep everything separate but you may not like to do it that way if not then you're going to be installing your stuff on the c drive and you'll only have like one drive i recommend it i recommend installing retro arch on uh an ssd on your drive and having all your roms like i have over here on a micro sd card so the e drive is my micro sd card and i've got may on here which is an independent thing i'll be using and i've got roms and this is everything that i'm going to be using within retro arch i've got quite a bunch here uh, and we'll run some of those after okay so now let's first so what i want to do is go over to d and i'm just gonna sorry it's got like a, a single click thing so i need to know how to change i'm so used to double clicking but let's go over to retro arch okay and okay now so go in retro arch once till you get to this folder retro arch win 64 and let's just copy that okay getting used to uh windows 11 everything's different okay so let's paste that over here that shouldn't take too long okay awesome we've now got retro arch installed we can uh, we can close that down for now so let's just have a look at this 
So here's our RetroArch. So in order to launch RetroArch, we need to find the RetroArch.exe. So let's just have a look down here for that exe file under R should be there. Let's have a look. Here we go. It's this one here. So what we should be able to do, hopefully I can just drag it and yep here we go we can link it here now the only reason i'm going to link it here is for ease of use it just means i can press that to launch retroarch so let's go ahead and launch retroarch okay here we are so we are in retroarch there's a few different uh, menus and front ends you can use but i want to let's go over first thing to drivers and that's up to you what you use but the menu that i like is the XMB one, which reminds me a lot of the PlayStation 3 menu. Uh, now, it should, by default, it usually quits. Uh, sorry, it usually saves when you uh, when you quit. Let me just find my way around. Okay, main menu. Okay, quit RetroArch. Hopefully, it will save it. I think by default, it does. Let's, let's find out. So, let's quit RetroArch. And then we're going to launch RetroArch again. And hopefully, uh, we will have that PlayStation Freestyle menu. It's the one that I like. It's the one that I'm most used to. Yeah, it does. So by default, it saves everything as you quit. Now, the next thing we want to do is let's go over to um, is it video. Right. So full screen mode. Let's go full screen mode because we want it to start in full screen mode. We want it to look nice. And here we go. We have got it in full screen mode. So we are looking good. Okay. What we've done so far, we have uh, changed the menu to XMB. That's what I like. If you like any of the other menus, have a look at them and go with the one that you like. But this is definitely the one that I like. Now, in RetroArch, we've got calls. Calls are the emulators. If you think of RetroArch as a front end and the calls are your different emulators. So let's go ahead and download a bunch of calls. This is crucial. You need to have the calls before you start scanning your ROMs. Otherwise, it won't pick up your ROMs. It won't direct. It won't generate the playlist. So let's go download a call and it's going to give us a whole list of calls. So uh, let's go uh, Final Burn Neo. That's a ROM set I like. Dude, I might take a while to scan that one. So I might not use it. But I might not scan it for the purpose of this video and then let's just go and download a few others uh, i like the snes one so let's go down to snes uh, and even like the mega drive one let's go okay pc engine is a good one as well so let's get a pc engine call here there's a lot more stuff you can get that i'm going to show you in this video so look you've got 3ds you've got D, uh, ds you've got all your game boys there's quite a lot of stuff there nes okay so let's go and download a few i quite like beastness uh, and the rog ally is definitely powerful enough to run it and let's just go snes 9x as well and then let's get down to the sega machines and do the mega drive and, and for this video we'll have a look at the mega drive and, and the snes so here we go and we'll download a few different cores can't remember what the best one is i think i used genesis plus ex quite a bit uh, when i'm doing stuff on windows now what we want to do uh, so make sure you've got some roms on your machine it's up to you where you put those roms i recommend putting them on an, an sd card put all your roms on an sd card that's a nice way of doing it keep your main your steam games your epic games your origin games keep them on your main hard drive and keep your roms uh even like playstation 2 and gamecube ones they run okay so what we want to do let's go over to scan directory and e drive is our memory card um like we said and here we go we've got the roms here so let's go into roms so if i go scan this directory it's going to scan all my roms which is going to take a long time and i'm probably gonna have to like shut the video and come back like a, a while later even though the rog ally is a powerful machine it will do it quite quickly so what do we say we're going to do we're going to do super nintendo so let's let's go in here and now go scan this directory and this will scan all the snes games for you as you can see it's doing it quite quick i've got 1745 different snes games on there now uh, i've got the no intro rom sets i think for the general part and hopefully it will generate a playlist and we'll be able to get our games okay awesome that has finished now let's go and do the mega drive ones uh here we go mega drive genesis let's scan these scan this directory and again just wait for it to scan 931 games to scan it's scanning it at a fairly good speed literally a few seconds okay good that has all scanned now once we get out of here we can oh we go so we've got all our snes games over here and we've got all our mega drive games over here let's just have a look at a couple of other things to make the experience nicer before we get into it so one thing i recommend is 
Okay, so let's head over to settings and input. And what we want to do is let's just have a look here for hotkeys. Okay, so once we're in hotkeys, menu, toggle, just set this to something like, for example, start and select is a good one. It's up to you what you want to do. That just means when you're in a game and you want to exit it and come back to the menu, you just press the start and the select button together and you're good. And another little thing that just makes it nice, go to online updater and then, okay, we've just, uh, we've installed a cause, but later on when you want to update your cause, you can go update install cause. And I like the title suggests it will just update the cause. Let's go to playlist thumbnail updater and then let's just do, yeah, let's grab us some thumbnails for um, the Super Nintendo and we'll grab some for the Mega Drive as well. Now, this, this takes some time, so I'll be back once it's all done. But let, let that get done, and that will give you a uh, nice box art and nice screenshots of the game. So when you're going through, like, games lists, if you're unsure if you've forgotten a game, maybe this will jog your memory. Okay, so that's actually, it's rather slow today, the way it's downloading. Usually it's quicker than that, but I did just download a few individual ones. So let's go over to SNES, and if you press the square button, so you'll have the thumbnails next to the games. So if you recognize the box, good. If you're unsure what it is, press the X button, and you can see graphics, and usually the title screen. And just move over to the Mega Drive, here you go. We've got the box art. We've got, uh, is that supposed to be the title screen? Okay, so we've got, yeah, we've got the list of games that's in this. This is a really good feature because it's, if there's games you've forgotten about, um, yeah, you can find them that way. And what you can do is, like, I'm downloading the whole lot, but what you can also do is when you go to select a game, you can download thumbnails individually. So if you just click on that, bang, you've got your thumbnail now. So you can you can download it for individual games if you prefer. But personally, I think that's a really nice feature just because you may have forgotten about a game. And then when you see it here, you're like, yes, I know that game. I know Free Ninja Kids. Oh, that's the graphics. I remember that. I should actually play it. Okay, so that's it. You've got it. So remember what you've seen over here. So when you add more ROMs, when you download more cores, you know, let's say, Let's, get, let's go and download another call just, just for the sake of it, in case you guys, uh, just a little reminder. So let's go to load call and then let's go over to, oh, we did download a PC Engine call, didn't we? So why not scan? Let's now go over and scan uh, some PC Engine games. So go to our E drive, ROMs and NEC PC Engine. Let's, let's scan this. This should be rather quick. Okay, finished scanning. One thing to point out, if your games are not unzipped, so for example, PC Engine, if they're not if they're not .pce, but instead they are zipped files, it will take a little while, a little bit longer to uh, run. But here we go. We've got the PC Engine now. It should be uh, um, should be good up ahead and uh, should be should be good and running. Sorry, I'm rumbling on here. Just want to get down to uh, let's find the game. Here we go, Bomberman '94, and let's just. Let's just run that over here. And that should, hopefully with any joy, bring us over. That's really it, guys. Just wanted to show you guys this tutorial. <laughs> you can see uh, I've got the thumbnail still downloading. It's very slow today. But we have got, um, yeah, we've got RetroArch on our system. Uh, so far, I've put on PC Engine, SNES, and Mega Drive. But in your own time, download the cores for the systems you want. And... Um, just um, yeah just just scan them and run them and also um, some some systems may require a BIOS file and in order to put the BIOS files if you look at where we installed RetroArch there's a folder there called systems or system that's where the BIOS files go if you've got any questions then uh, just hit me with them down below if you want to see more tutorials uh, really retro gaming based tutorials for the rogue ally then let me know in the comments but that's really it guys hope you enjoyed the video if you're not subscribed to the channel a subscription i like is super appreciated this is pixel cherry ninja out